film videos of businesses or neighborhood areas that people in your farm actually like. Hey, everyone in your farm, they don't like to go to the Vons, they go to Albertsons, feature the Albertsons, right? Or or if, you know, there's a little league in the area that, that serves your farm, feature that little league versus another one. Um, I don't know, that was my big one. That, in terms that of, was your big one. That was your big contribution for the day. In terms of selecting it. So, and then also when you're distributing You waited it, 12 and a half minutes to share that. Yeah, I think it's a good one. Welcome to the Whistle Way Podcast. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with Whistle Realty Group and EXP Realty in San Diego. And I'm Brian Kochi, the marketing director here at Whistle Realty Group. The goal of the show is to give you the tools, techniques, and tactics that you need to go out there and crush it in your business. And our goal is to do that in 30 minutes or less. We want this to be the type of podcast you can listen to on your way to or from the office um, and get it all in one shot and not have to listen for four hours and break it into pieces because I don't know about you, but I can't handle that shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy the podcast today, we'd really appreciate it if you're watching on YouTube, if you can hit the little thumbs up button. And the subscribe button, a little notification bell so you get updated to future episodes of the show. Or if you're listening on a podcast platform, if you could hook us up with a review on there, we would really appreciate it if we added any value to you today. Um, the way that we run this show is rather than guessing what it is that you want to hear about, we just listen to you. And the, you guys get to ask us questions and we answer them on the show. So if you have a question you want to have answered on the show, you can always go to thewhistleway.com thewhistleway.com. Ask us questions, subscribe to the podcast, the YouTube channel, join our referral network, um, join our Facebook group, and find out about upcoming events like our Media Mayor Mastermind that Brian and I, we put eight hours in last week shooting, and we're putting like 12 hours in next week shooting. So uh, Media Mayor Mastermind is a course where Brian and I take everything we've learned in the last six years of shooting video together and condense it into about 20 hours worth of content to basically help you instead of spending six years to learn all this stuff, you can learn it all in 20 hours worth of content. And it's taking me forever to edit. Oh my God, <laughs> this thing is massive. I've, I went through the first like maybe two hours yeah. since last week. Nice. Well, it's good. That's why we spaced out the recordings. Thank you. Yeah. I'm dying editing this. It's looking great. It's sounding great. It's just, it's a lot of work that goes into it. So that's a, uh, yeah. But cool. it's, it's coming along really, really well. And I want to talk to you about giving away some of this content for free. So we'll talk about that later. All right. Maybe not on the podcast, but uh, after. All right. Well, let's uh, dive in. What is our question today? Our question comes from an agent out of Illinois. I looked it up this time. Yep. Uh, this is, comes from Justin Barney. You know, Barney. this is one of the only states that there's more people leaving than California. Really? Yep. All right. Mass exodus of Illinois. Yeah. So, yeah, they track U-Haul puts out this study every year on where is it that U-Hauls are moving to. Illinois is number 50 on the list. California is in the high 40s. So there's Weird. very few people moving to Illinois. There's a lot of people leaving Illinois. Or if they're moving there, they're not using U-Haul. No. <laughs> no there's plenty of people leaving. I think like half of our company is from Illinois. This is true. Yeah. Cool. So, anyways, this is an agent from Illinois or in Illinois, it has an Illinois zip or phone number. Uh, this is from Justin Barney. Awkward. And instead of me trying to figure out what he says, I'm just going to read just it to read you. It, yeah. This one's pretty easy. Uh, he says, I'm making a list of local businesses that I want to interview and record videos with. My question is for a smaller or new Facebook page, do you have a marketing plan you follow to get the maximum exposure for your video in your farm? Okay. That's all he's yeah. Got. So he wants to emulate the media mayor strategy it yep. sounds like yep. okay so the question then is how do we he get maximum traction on those videos and get engagement yep okay and cool. specifically and i don't know this may be me inferring that's when we get in trouble is how we do it in his farm and so let's assume the farm is smaller than his entire city okay well i would imagine if you're going to dive into shooting community videos it's going to be in your farm anyway so i mean that's that's the logical part there um, I think a couple things that we've learned from our show, which is most recently Everything East County, is that, one, you want to have a few episodes in the bank. You never know what's going to happen, uh, whether you get sick, a guest gets sick, or Especially a variety times, of yeah. different things, right? It's COVID. Somebody could get COVID the day before your shoot or the day of your shoot, and now you don't have an episode to put out that week. So 
Uh, first piece of advice, if you're going to do a show where you're interviewing local businesses, um, ideally you have a calendar of how often you're going to put this content out. Whether And I'm fine, right? I don't care what the frequency is as long as it's a consistent frequency. So if it's monthly, cool. If it's weekly, cool. Bi-weekly, cool. But be consistent with it. Don't make a show where you just put a video out whenever you feel like it because that's what agents do when it comes to prospecting and look at what their income does, right? It looks like a roller coaster. Um, you don't want your content to look like a traditional real estate agent's income and just do it when you feel like it. Make a plan and stick to it. So weekly, whatever, bi-weekly, monthly, stick to that. Um, I recommend you always have at least, I mean, at a bare minimum, you gotta have one emergency episode in the bank. I personally like three in the bank. Yeah. More than that, then it gets really confusing of, did we launch this or, hey, we filmed this a month and a half, you know, we do it weekly. Hey, we filmed this a month ago. It's with how things are changing, we've literally filmed episodes that we didn't put out because businesses went out of business. And so if you have 20 in the bank, that's probably too much. Uh, if you have zero in the bank, you will soon uh, understand that stress. So I like two to four. I like three is my, my safe number. Cool. Yeah. At least one emergency. I mean, at a bare, bare, bare minimum. Um, but yeah, three is a good number to have. So make sure you have a few in the bank. Um, and so as far as like getting the maximum engagement on these things, some of the lessons that we've learned, and we go into detail on this in the Media Mayor Mastermind course. Well, let's um, just explain the whole course in 30 minutes. Yeah, the course it takes 20 hours to go through. <laughs> um, so some of the things to know, one, you don't want to post all these on your personal page, nor do you want to post these on your business page. Um, people have a resistance to liking real estate pages. Our first series um, Santee Saturdays, we did all on our Whistle Realty Group page, and we got a good amount of traction, but we mm -hmm. could have had significantly more had we not put them on a real estate page. That would have helped us out a ton, because the thing is, people are hesitant to like a real estate page because they believe if I like a real estate page, you're going to force feed me real estate content. I don't want real estate content, I want community content. So therefore, you should probably make a community page. So we learned when we launched our second show, which was East County Eats. We did that on its own page and we got significantly more traction, significantly quicker um, because now people were not hesitant to like the page because they were like, oh, this is a community page. It's called Everything East County. I'm gonna get, or I'm sorry, East County Eats. I'm gonna get more places to eat in East County. Um, so we saw a massive lift um, in getting engagement immediately on it. Immediately. It did not take a long time. I thought you were wrong. I said, no, I don't wanna do it this way. And I, I was wrong. You were right. I was wrong. It happens once in a while. I'm wrong a lot, though. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not wrong sometimes and you're not trying, you got to make mistakes. So, um, yeah, you want to have it on its own page. I think that's really important. I think the other part that I'm really big on is getting a lot of mileage out of every episode that you shoot. So start teasing where it is that you're going to shoot. Maybe even start running polls of like where you should shoot, like get people engaged. Like, hey, I want to shoot an episode at the best pizza joint in town. Where's the best pizza in San Diego? And then you get everybody to vote and people are very passionate about their pizza or whatever, right? Yep. Um, people are very passionate. So that can help you start to get engagement before you ever even like release episodes of your show. Or um, even on the back end. Yeah. After you release, and we did that for a while, and I, we should do that again. But I think in the beginning, it could be really good. Mm -hmm. Like, we Absolutely. have an advantage now on the back end where we could say, hey, who's got the better pizza, these guys or these guys? And now we actually have the two videos, and you could put the video side by side. But if you were just starting, this would be a way to get some engagement going on your page before you ever even drop a video. Yep. Um, so I would do some stuff like that. And then once you start doing the videos, one of the things that's worked amazingly well for us is shooting a Facebook Live while we're at the restaurant just straight cell phone by myself, like while Brian and, and the crew are in the restaurant filming and getting like with their tens of thousands of dollars of cameras, I'm just sitting here holding my iPhone. What's up guys? And I'm just talking to my iPhone and I would traditionally get 20% of the views of like the yep. long recorded video. So those are great. And you don't even need professional video. Like you could do a show purely from your cell phone. You could do it. Especially right now with COVID, either from your cell phone or just doing it from your computer and doing Zooms. Again, that's a great way to start building a relationship at a really low budget. Yeah. So going live while you're there is like a little teaser behind the scenes kind of thing. That works amazingly well. Um, 
shoot the actual video, I think the key is, you know, getting the business owner and the company involved in it and helping them understand what to do with the video when it's done. Because the number one way to get your video out to more people is to have it shared, not just liked, not just commented, but shares on social are the most important thing. So helping the business owner, don't ever assume that they know what to do. Like you got to help them understand, hey, you and every single one of your employees and your brother and your sister and your mom and dad, you need everybody to share this video. Because Facebook, if a video is getting shared, that means it was not only good enough for me to click the like button, it was not only good enough for me to you know, click the comment button and type something, it was good enough that I wanted to put it on my own page. Like that is a clear sign to Facebook that this is a good video. And if this person was willing to share it on their personal page and 10 other people were, this has got to be a great video. So it's going to show it to a lot more people. So uh, that would be a huge, huge tip on that. Um, I think in the beginning too, I would be a fan of having a budget behind your video to get some traction and to get it in front of some people. So make sure that you are uh, pumping some money into it. Set a budget. Uh, we traditionally run a $10 a day budget. Not a lot of money. It's like 3650 bucks a year. Like it's not a lot. $300 a month. Um, so we would just run $10 a day, 70 bucks for a week every time we would drop a video. But what that would do is that would get it some paid reach. But then again, as you start getting likes and comments and most importantly shares that starts to increase the organic reach on those videos so i want to go and this is all good stuff we talk about this in depth in the media mastermind and we talked about this before but what i do want to do is kind of narrow in on the part where he talks about in your farm mm -hmm. um, because i think there's that's something i don't think we've talked about before um and i think we can hit that up in the next five or ten minutes yeah so let so me hit on one more thing and this okay. is the one that's most um missed when you do get people who are engaging or reacting is the technical term to your videos, that means they gave it a thumbs up, thumbs down, a smile, a sad face, whatever. You can go back on Facebook and see everybody who did that and then invite them to like your page, which is a really valuable like because that person, one, saw the video, two, reacted to the video, three, saw that you invited them to like the page, and then four, accepted that invite. At that point, Facebook's like, this person really likes those videos Every time one of those videos comes up, it's going to show that person, um, which will help and keep getting it in front of people over and over and over again. So you're not just like a one hit wonder. Yep. Um, and right. then you can do some cool nerdy stuff with ads in the back end, which we'll talk about in the event. Yeah. I don't want to go into now. Cool. Um, so, so how do we tie it into the farm? Yeah. A couple things I was thinking about. Yeah. And I want to hear your thoughts too. Um, one is film videos of businesses or neighborhood areas that people in your farm actually like hey everyone in your farm they don't like to go to the Vons. they go to albertson's feature the albertson's right or or if you know there's a little league in the area that that serves your farm feature that little league versus another one um i don't know that was my big one that, in terms that was of, your big one that in, was your big contribution for in terms the day of selecting it. so and then also when you're distributing you waited it, 12 and a half minutes to share that yeah i think it's a good one when you're being specific about choosing who your who your businesses are, not just people in Santee, but people on the you know the east side of Santee that that maybe um, I don't know, it's basically building an avatar for your farm and and highlighting those areas that they like. Yeah. Um, so that's where like the polls that we were talking about can be really good because that gets your farm engaged and it allows your farm to have a voice in the direction of the show. So I think that's huge. Um, if you're running any kind of direct mail campaigns, I think it would be great to have a little, you know, section, whether you're doing a magazine, a newspaper, a postcard, whatever, have something on there. Like, hey, this month's featured business is, and put that on there. And then what that's going to do, whether people actually go to that page or not, they're going to see it. And they're going to be like, oh, Kyle's tied into the local community. Like, that's the kind of person I want to sell my home with. So whatever print marketing you're doing, I would recommend that you do that on there. And I found that I've been able to share these videos into the local next door and Facebook groups and not gotten shit for it. Whereas if I shared anything real estate related, they're coming with freaking pitchforks after yeah. me. Um, so I could very easily share, Hey, you guys have driven by the omelet factory a thousand times. Like check out this video to see what they're all about. And people really like that content. And I've never gotten shit from anybody about posting community videos into my local community group in my farm. And that's really good for, especially when we launch the videos new, but also kind of keeping an eye on those groups 
that you're a part of that your farm's in, a lot of times you'll see people, hey, I need um, I need a good date night spot. Where should I go in, in San Diego? And I'll send them three or four videos. Hey, this one, this one, this one. Hey, I'm looking for dinner spots in Santee. Where should I go? And we already have that database. So now not only am I not just posting about it, but I'm sending them links to specific um, specific spots that we've highlighted. Yep. Yeah, so I think that that is huge. Um, trying to think if there's any other specific things I could think One of. One of the things that we've done is we created a Facebook oh, group for um, for our community. And one of the questions I ask there is, I say, hey, if you want to be included on our newsletter, give us your email. If not, don't even worry about it. Um, and so if they include their, their email, this is a great way to build your email list. That way you can send these videos out when they launch. Yeah, the other one that I love, and this is one of the best ways to tie in these community videos into your farm, is doing open houses and assuming you're doing like restaurants, having a restaurant that you've had on the show cater the open house that's in your farm. Um, I think I'm gonna do an open with food. Uh oh. I think I'm. I think I'm ready to give it a shot. Um, Are all they outdoors. Be all outdoors. Wear your mask if you're not eating or drinking. I mean, if I could be at a freaking restaurant and I don't have to wear a mask when I'm eating or drinking, I don't see why it's got to be any different if I'm outside in a backyard. Is it going to be buffet style where they get their own stuff? No. no okay. They, no, you'd have to have somebody serve. Okay. So we'll probably have somebody serve individual drinks and food and all that. But I think I'm ready to I'm ready to toe the, the line right now on doing a community open house with food and drinks again. We would just have it to where there's only one group out of time in the house um <laughs> this group is everyone that lives in uh, <laughs> on the street the <laughs> yep we're everybody who lives on sevilla you guys are coming out of, um in california we will only have one group at a time coming through the house because uh, that's what the rule is <laughs> but um having food and drinks from local businesses so pre-covid when we were doing our open houses we would say hey you've seen giant pizza king and bns brewery on the show Stop by this open house today, have some free pizza, a drink on us, and check out the house while you're there. And so now you're weaving in the fact to the people who've watched your show that you do real estate, and then the people in your community that you partner with all these local restaurants, and you know, you're the local girl, the local guy, um, which people really appreciate that. Everybody wants to work with a local specialist. Cool. So um, tying in, if you're doing a restaurant, have their food and drinks at your open house. because. In other states, open houses are crushing right now. So being that I know that it's not just people from California that are listening or watching the show, there are people all over the country, and I think half the states in the union now are, don't even have mask rules right now. So open houses are crushing in some states, and I, I have a feeling we're going to be opening back up shortly here to do regular open houses. So I'm going to toe the line. Tom has a question. I have a question. Um, you touched on it on ads, but Koshi, can you spend like two minutes kind of talking about maybe how you set up like certain ads for so we got a okay. live live question coming in from the facebook feed on just a quick hit on how to set up ads on facebook and instagram to drive traffic to your videos yeah so good luck explaining this without uh, visuals so no this will be this will be the the quick and dirty version um so a couple things you want to do th to note when you're creating ads one you've got a couple different options for how you can create the ads what what your desired outcome is um, I would do, on these videos, I would do one of three things. Either do reach, therefore sees the most amount of, the most amount of people see it. Um, do, two, do engagement. That's another option. And that's ha having people comment, share, like. Um, that's a great way to build engagement, obviously. Or three is getting video views. Um, and so depending on what metric you want to go after more is the one of the outcomes that I would go after. And you could play around with that too, where in the beginning you might want to go video views just to get your credibility up there. Because what we did our first video was like a friend yep. and who just was like, I'll be your guinea pig for your show. But then once you have that first one, if you can go hard on the video views, that's the thing that's going to get other people excited about it. So now you're like, hey, we just launched this new show. We had our first guest on. We had like 2,000 views on their video. Would you be interested in getting 2,000 views on, on your business? Yep that second guest is gonna be easier. And then over time, you could start to shift off the video views because you're gonna have more organic views happening and shift more into the engagement, which is more important. Um, yeah, so that's 
that's number one. Number two is I would work into your audiences because now you've built it, and we talk again more about much more about this in depth at the Media Mayor Mastermind. But because you've built out your um, page as a non real estate page, you have your real estate page and your community page that you've hosted this on. You can be a lot more specific in who you target, so you can specific tighter than 15 mile radius areas. You can specific people that have certain likes and dislikes. Now, again, when you do this, make sure you're not doing this to be discriminatory, right? They put in these these kind of a filters to make sure that no matter how hard you try, you can't be discriminatory. So don't use this for evil. Um, but if you're trying to target a specific neighborhood because this coffee shop only serves this neighborhood, because I don't I don't know why, um, but you can be a lot more specific. So um, that, and then I would also mess around with uh, uploaded custom audiences. So we've talked about being specific with your targeting, we talked about choosing your objective, and then uploading custom audiences for people in your database, people in your sphere, people in your, in your specific farm. You can upload those and then target those people uh, specifically as long as they match. There's, there's some details on the back end, but that's gonna be a good way for the people that you want to see these videos to actually see them. Cool. How was that? That was pretty decent without visuals. That's good. All right. So, you pulled it together on the end. I got a B minus. <laughs> All right, the way we like to wrap up the show is to share something we're utilizing in our business that either saves us time, makes us more money, or just helps us have more fun. Yeah. What do you got for us today, Brian? So my, While I pull mine up, because I was forgot about this part of the show. <laughs> uh, I think I may have done this one already, but I actually just utilized it again for probably the second time this week. Um, and this allows you to create a pretty uh, easy and good looking video all from your phone. Um, so you can use text, you can use transitions, you can use music, uh, and it's really, really easy. It took me a, a couple minutes to learn how to use it, but it's called Splice. Again, I think I used this one already. Um, but you just take your little video clips, and then you bring them into a timeline. You can add text over it. You can add some overlays for, for effects. You can click between the two video clips to add transitions and add music. It took me probably, the first time I did it, probably 20 minutes to make a little... 30 second video, probably be half that next time. Um, and it was a cool little tool to make a reel for Instagram. Spice. Cool. How uh, do you use that, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, cool, I did. <laughs> We've done this show for a couple years now, so we may happen to accidentally reuse a widget but from I actually, time to time. I, I used it in but depth, but that means it's been really long enough it. that you that it was time to re, yep. you know, represent that one. Okay, uh, the one I have is this is um, an app. It's also a desktop version. And this company has been innovating a lot. And I really like the stuff that they're doing because they're trying to make our job easier as agents and save us time. So here in California, our coronavirus disclosure is called a PEED form, um, which is the bane of our existence. Agents hate this PEED form, but this company has really helped make it a lot easier to get those PEED forms done. Also things like our visual inspections and a lot of other forms, uh, both for us as agents and for our clients. And instead of having the client have to print out all these papers and check all these boxes, they're able to do it in a digital version using a service called Glide, G-L-I-D-E. Um, Glide has been awesome for us. It's really helped increase the experience for our uh, buyers and our sellers. And it's helped increase the experience for our agents who are constantly having to do these PEED, these coronavirus disclosure forms while they're out and about on the road, there's not only the desktop version, but there's also an app now. Um, sorry if for Android users, it's iPhone only. Uh, but that service has been fantastic. So check out the Glide app. Um, that has been a game changer. How much is it? Free 99. Ooh, that's my favorite kind. I'm sure there's like a paid version. I don't know what's included in what, but as far as I know, we're not paying for it. I think we're just running the free version. Actually, it's $12,000 a month per user. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, that's what we got for you. If you guys enjoyed the show today, if you got value out of it, if you watched us on, uh, on YouTube, you can hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you get updated on future episodes of the show. We'd really appreciate that. Also, if you're listening on a podcast platform, you can hook us up with a review. That goes a really long way uh, to help expose our show to more people. We love to share and love to give back to the real estate community. So with that said, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Whistle Way Podcast. See y'all next week. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I want to share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here.
And don't forget to subscribe, click right here.